evening, I'm Mary Parkinson, and this evening I'm with a real mixed bag of Midlands fans. We've got Leicester, Wolves, Birmingham and Villa here. Gavin, you are the Aston Villa mascot. What possesses a grown man to put on a silly suit <laughs> and do what you do? The banter, the... Aston Colibor. Just, <laughs> just being be part of the club, it's, it's part of being the club, and I, and I, I just love mucking around, going out there, especially like Leeds this season when you guys are out there who spat on me. You know, it's, it's a bit of banter, going back to like, not the trouble scenes, like the 70s I loved it. And when you when I walk back off and the away fans are giving me a bridge here, yeah, it's, it's calm that down. It's the edge feeling. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's, it's, it's going to the pub before the game, having a, a couple of tots and going out there and just being out on the pitch and you know what I mean? I mean, you get on the pitch more than we do. <laughs> Let's face it. The well, the last time I got on the pitch at Villa Park, they actually did tell me off. Did they? I had two shots on goal, missed them, and then the third one actually went in. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it was a corker. Got a five-year well, contract. Yeah, I mean, no offence, Dan. Uh, I mean, what Sav said about you in the press this week? But uh, no, I mean, it, it's just been part of Aston Villa. So yeah. It's, it's in my Are you a lifelong Villa fan? Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And what about you, Janice? Have you been a, a lifelong Birmingham fan? Absolutely. Born in Birmingham. Obviously, we carry the city's name, which is more than you'll ever do. <laughs> well, uh, I think it's fair to say, like for each of us here, we'd much rather watch like five minutes of our own team than five hours of anybody like, else. Well, Manchester yeah. United, Liverpool, probably playing the best football you know, but it's around. Not the same. It doesn't but, matter. Does to watch your own team, and I personally would rather watch two minutes of Birmingham than five hours of Manchester United versus Liverpool. I mean, the, okay, there are I disagree there because I'd rather watch class football uh, being a Premiership side. <laughs> uh, but uh, even so, it would be nice to see like Villa get a, a few more like you know. Uh, we talk, we talk passion. Classics up, we uh, talk passion in the Midlands. Let's talk about the Geordies. Let's talk about the Geordies being the most passionate supporters in the country. Newcastle United, they said they're the Desperately most passionate. Overrated. Right? Desperately overrated. Yeah. Desperately overrated. You, you get to Manchester. Manchester, they say Manchester, Manchester United, best supporters in the league. You get down to London, you get down, you get down to London, you get down to London, now talk about this. In the Midlands, we've got as much passion as anybody. Yeah. Right? We feel everything for our clubs. Yeah, right? clubs I, I would die for I would die histories. for Wolverhampton Wanderers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I respect everybody else's opinion around this table. The, the, but as far as I'm concerned, there is only one team in the Midlands, there's only one team I want to watch, and that is Wolverhampton Wanderers. Right? But having said that, I would rather see West Brom, Villa, Birmingham and Leicester doing well, then seeing Man United, Liverpool, Arsenal, anybody else. I mean, we're the yes, passionate yeah. community and we stick yeah. together. The Midlands boys, right? There's no we, we can match anybody. No. We can match anybody yeah. in the country. Yeah. Well, at the moment, that that is debatable. But you know, I mean, Villa, you, I mean, you, you struggled this season to get going, haven't you? Definitely. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I think at the moment the the since last season the the, the eight fit still there. We bought and. It hasn't gelled yet, has it? No, it, it hasn't. Just hasn't no, gelled it yet. just hasn't. I mean, the defence. If you look at the defence, the defence is still solid. We're looking through goals. Only. It's still the same players. I don't know if Brian Little, if you're out there, Brian, what you've done with buying Stan Collymore and playing this like three forward role. I don't think it's worked. And more players. It's hard to play three York... forwards with a five-man Ma defence. Yes, yes. As a Wolverhampton yes. Wanderers supporter, if Villa yeah. want to offload Stan Collymore, we'll take Stan tomorrow. Stan, you're a Wolves <laughs> fan. Yeah. I'm a Wolves fan. I want to see Dan the Molyneux Stan. Excuse me, he comes from Cannon. He does, yes, and he, he supports Wolves. He's a, he's a Villa fan. Stan, get on this programme and tell him who you support, do you Stan. Want, do you want Stan? <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not, no. <laughs> what about Leicester? Definitely not, no. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's most overrated. Steve Bruce has gone all these down, as I said. <laughs> yes, he has this season. He absolutely. absolutely he has. He probably gets paid a little bit more money, but uh, yeah, at 37 years old, if he can do the business, he's like. Is he 37 now, Bruce? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, he was a fantastic servant for Manchester United. Bruce Forsyth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> I think he was a fine boy for uh, Blues. Yeah, Good absolutely. Good experience. Like I mean, it's, Paul McGuff. It is, you, see, really. you see the players when they, they go past the peak in the Premiership and they can, they can drop down. I mean, you see someone like Ian Rush who is still really struggling now yeah. in in the top flight. And players yeah. like Brucey. Ian Rush, he either ought to hang Paul his McGuff. boots up now. No, Ian, yeah, Bruce, Ian Rush, right? He's either got to hang his boots 
Newcastle, or he's got a a tumble pie and he's got to go to a lower division club yeah. as a player manager. Yeah. Ian Rush was one of the best strikers I mean, this country's ever Aldridge. seen. No, but Ian Rush was one of the best strikers this country's yeah. ever seen. Absolutely. And if he steps down now, as John Aldridge has done with Tranmere, okay, yeah. he's not making so many appearances now. Rushy would be a great striker in the lower divisions. Yeah. Do yourself a favour, Ian. Come down the Wolves, get us in the Premier. You <laughs> <laughs> and Stan Collymore, Steve Ball with there. Have you got room for him too? My God. Yeah. <laughs> what about Stan Collymore? What about Stan Collymore at Villa? You know, you're paying the wages of that. I'd far sooner see Steve Claridge at Leicester for the wages we're paying him to what you're paying at Collymore because I think yeah. he's most overrated. Do you think Claridge is going to stay? I, I mean, think there's you will. Uh, yeah, because yeah, Steve he's a Claridge just stay at Leicester because nobody he's else will buy him. I mean, he's oh, no, an extraordinary man, isn't he? He's <laughs> a madman, isn't he? He's yeah, but what, he, what he's done for Leicester, I mean, don't tell me wrong, and I've got to say this in front of the camera. When we saw him, I said, what the hell we're buying him for? Uh, but yeah. I've been proved wrong. That oh. man... I love Slavic Claridge, which when you never sell him shirt on, <laughs> When he pulls our shirt on, he will run, he will hold the ball up. Yeah. You know, and I think we've been missing him over the last two or three matches. And now he's come back, proved it. Yeah. On Monday, he held the ball up. We want somebody to stand there and say, I'll hold it, you come and take it, you have won and score. talking about players that clubs need. One player that's recently left the Midlands club, they're not represented around this table, West Bromwich Albion, Paul Pesca Salido has just gone to Fulham. Yeah. Uh, my mate Bob, my, good, yeah, my mate Bob is an Albion supporter and I've said to him, the player we need down the Wolves to give us a bit of, you know, a bit of movement up front is Paul Pesca Salido. Yeah. We've missed out on him now, he's gone chasing the money down in London, right? But Paul Pesca Salido is far, far too good a player oh, to be playing for Fulham. In the second yeah. division. Yeah, definitely. Well, 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 it's all about the place, isn't it? And there was talk of Leicester making a bit and, and us, yeah. Why did Birmingham sell him? Uh, probably because he married Karen Bride, eh? and there's a bit <laughs> of stick inside <laughs> the dressing room. <laughs> and we're not going to go into that one. But, yeah, so he's a nice hockey man, Canadian, and he only asked for a puck. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking the Midlands today, and all four of us want to talk about, well, the five of us actually, want to talk about referees. That's right, I mean, I believe you've got something quite interesting to say. Yeah. The referee just moved up to the Premier Division, Uriah Rennie. As far as I'm aware, he's the only black referee that's refereeing at top flight football. And I would say Uriah Rennie, if you're watching Uriah, you're the best referee I have seen in the Football League or the Premier Division for a long, long time. You deserve to do well. I mean, we played Port Vale two seasons ago. We got four black players in our sides. And the, as the talk is on the terraces, we'll be OK here. We got four black players and a black referee out there. What did he do? Mark Rankin sent him off, right? Indiscretion, he deserved to go, he went. Yeah. Straight away, no racism in football. They said, let's kick racism out of football. We've got a black referee there doing a very good job, taking no preference. Uriah Rennie, best referee in the league. I mean, yeah. Yeah, we're getting that, but let's, let's go down over the whole system of the, the Premiership First Division. Standing the referee and he's way down. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's no consistency. You'll do you think the refereeing, has, the standard of refereeing has dropped, or do you think that just the demands that are being made on referees are greater now? I mean, I think it's a combination of the two. I think the standard has dropped. The standard has definitely dropped. The standard has dropped, and uh, just going beside the point, we're still on football now. Uh, Sunday League football, the standard has gone like the referees on Sunday League football, which I play, yeah. has gone higher. Right. They think they are bloody the FIFA. Yeah. yeah. I know I'm, I'm talking behind the point now, but uh, no, I mean. So they think they're FIFA officials? I, 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 yeah, I mean, Sunday League football, it's going crazy at the moment. I've got some like uh, on, on Skylight, some uh, Premiership games, and, and uh, it's absolutely unbelievable. They've gone down. That's what we're going to bring into the full stage. Go, go back, you're saying there's a standards drop. Go back to Clive the Book Thomas, right? Clive yeah. Thomas. Everybody yeah. knows Clive yeah. Thomas. Yeah. You knew where you stood with him. Strong referee. Whether he was right, whether he was wrong, he stood there and he, he, he stood there to be counted. Yeah. Some of these referees here, I mean, Clive Thomas was never persuaded by the crowd to go one way or the other. He was his own he man and whether he was right, whether he was wrong, he stuck by it. Now some of these referees, their do decisions are being swayed. Do you think they are swayed by the crowd? I do, yes. Yeah. 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 Because we had this when we played after the Madrid. When we were over there. And they said that uh, we would get a better deal from the referee when we come over to Leicester. But we didn't, we had a far, far worse ref. Yeah, and at the moment he's suspended, he will not ref another, another game. That's right, he, yeah. uh, he has. Yeah, he's finished. You, I mean, you take some referees like the, the Dutchman who refereed the England Italy game was fantastic. He performed very, very I mean, well. He yeah. really did perform 
well. I mean, you, I mean, that if we're talking about intimidating atmospheres. That must have been one of the most hostile atmospheres to referee in ever. And he was not swayed by the Italians. At yeah, all, what, was he? what we say is not ever. Not every referee is bad, and not every referee is good. But the standard of refereeing, as a whole, what do you has see dropped. As the solution then, what do you see? Full-time referees. Full -time referees. Oh, I think it's got to be said that they yeah. should be paid full-time. Have professional referees. It, it's so inconsistent. It, it's unbelievable. You have good refs, you have bad refs. Yeah, I think, you have I mean, to I think what everybody wants is a level of consistency. Absolutely. Right. I mean, the demands on referees are colossal today. They have to be fitter. The game is so much faster than it was Mary, 20 can I, years can I ago. Say, I think that's why we need professional referees. Yeah, yeah. Of, to yeah, keep yeah, up with yeah, the demands of the game. There, so there, yeah, there was a point made in the first half, Mary. We've got two Premier Team supporters here and we've got two First Division teams. Yeah. The referees in the Premier Division are paid a retainer and £350 a game. Yeah. Yeah. The referees in the Nationwide League are paid £180 a game, yeah. right? That's that's just above half of what the Premiers are. Yeah. Now, are they saying an Aston Villa game or a Leicester game is more important to the players, the teams and the supporters no, 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 than no, no, a Birmingham no, City? No, you're not saying that, but are, no, no. are the people who pay the money saying no, that? Yeah, yeah, on, on I mean, cross, that's what we're that's saying. saying. Are the people who are paying the money saying no, that no, Premier no, Division is more important than the Nationwide Did, League? If it's not, then pay them the same, get them full-time contracts, and let's pay them 30, 40 grand a year or whatever they need, rather than having to go out, you know, shoe shine boys or whatever they do in the daytime, and try and come out and do a referee's job on the day. My, my, my solution, my solution, Mary, is, is to get cameras involved in the game. You think so? Yeah, yeah well, if you watch the Sky game, I mean, Andy Gray's got it a touch of the ball. Like rugby league. And you can see, you can see. Like rugby league, yeah. that limited. Yeah. Yeah. It would not last that long. It's only a phone call from a second official down the line that was pretty like on side. One at a time, one at a time. If, if, if it was such a blatant referee incident and he wasn't sure, he would look up and a goal was involved, he would look up and it would be there straight down. They could review it and they would say, and it would be classed off. And that would be done in seconds. That would be done in seconds. If you're doing similar to cricket where the indicates the third umpire, where that did the ball cross the line or did he punch him in the face, fine, but you can't just keep stopping and starting to avoid him there forever. No, it's not a goal or a penalty decision. You've only got to look up at the stands. And listen in your earpiece, yes. Yeah. A, decision. a decision. That's yeah. what we're saying. A decision. Right. We'll go back to the classic one. That Not an elbow. It was brought up on Monday, and this is what I was saying about the uh, right read, which is the penalty incident at Chelsea. Right? And I agree, for something like that, when it involves with the last couple of minutes, it means a. Because that cost us mega bucks. For, for something like that, I think it should be a third eye. Yeah. So you would restrict it to within the box for penalty, or did it cross the line? No, what decision? What, what you I saw a decision where the goal would. would so it, well, you'd have to, you would, the 18 yard area would have to be, no, wouldn't no, it? No, Murray, what you've got to decide upon is television going to play such an important role in the game, or isn't it? This, this week, this week yeah. we've, we, we've had the experience of uh, uh, three players who have been sent off. Steve Ball, yeah. our star striker, yeah. was sent off in a game. Referee's report said. He grabbed a player around the throat and threw him to the floor. Yeah. That has proved to be totally false, yeah, false. on TV so evidence. It so it's overturned. Dave, Dave Besant against Reading. Yeah, right? overturned. It, but he cost them the game. Yeah. I mean, they, they, yeah. they were 2 0 up at the time. They ended up getting, instead of getting well, we three had points, Gary points Pallister they got. Gary Pallister as well. Gary Pallister, yeah. St. Colin Moore at Bolton. Yeah. And I mean, he was inflicted on and he got Where ran across. Yeah, but he, he punched yeah. him. Well, yeah. saying that, I mean, <laughs> four players on to one, he, four players on to They're both in Bolton. Bolton. Bolton are the dirtiest, oh, and dirtiest team in the Premier League. And then you go out and saw the ground at Bolton. It's a very nice. You've got to start a nap immediately. Where do you finish? One second. It's where you finish. And I think, regarding the likes of us at Toby Personally from Chelsea, for something like that, then I think we need it. Offside decisions are always going to be a thing. Because, yeah. I mean, let's be honest, when you've got a camera, they're all as if it anyway. So we've got to go down to basically the goal scoring. Yeah, no, I think we agree on that. It's the 18 yard box. Was it a penalty or was it a goal? Yeah. And then we leave it at that. Okay, we're going to wrap this one up there. Thanks very much.